Good morning. God scatters and God gathers. What's he going to do to gather his remnant? Our readings at Jeremiah 31 verses 7 to 9 today. For thus says the Lord, sing with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the ends of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the woman with child, and the one who labors with child together. A great throng shall return there. They shall come with weeping, with supplications. I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. So now, among the instructions that God gave his people through his servant Jeremiah, one of those instructions was to pray. Pray for deliverance. And we should do the same thing in our day. The church needs a lot of prayer these days, don't you agree? We should pray that God will intervene and save his church, save his remnant. He's going to gather his people from everywhere they've been scattered, mothers and fathers, sons and daughters, the oldest and the youngest. He's going to gather them all. He has wonderful plans for his people. He hasn't abandoned his church. The lame, the blind, the pregnant, he's got a plan for every single one of you. So now remember what it says in the Bible about the servants? His servants were to pray between the porch and the altar, pray for his intervention. He wants us to do that. There will be weeping. There will be desire for God to work for his people. We'll have a very strong, unquenchable desire that he will have his way. And that's going to mean a lot of repentance on our part. Supplication, you know, to pray, to plead with God for his intervention, to plead for him to do according to his will. Those are things that God's people would be praying for as they were to come back from captivity in Babylon. And of course, for us today, as we're to come back from this gross captivity to the world that the church seems largely stuck in these days, that can be ended. God wants to bring us back out of Babylon. The people are going to have a spirit of consecration. They're going to want to come back. And we see some of that already today. We see people who, who want to serve him. They want to draw closer. They're tired of the plastic, the artificial, the entertainment mode. They're tired of that. People want the real thing, and God wants to give them the real thing. The path back will also be disciplined. Notice here what it says. With supplications, verse 9, I will lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way in which they shall not stumble. God will help us to walk in a straight path. We're in a time of minimal responsibility, aren't we? Very few people talk today about standards coming up to the line, but God's people are going to walk in a straight line. They're going to walk in a path where there's no bumps in the way. It'll be smooth. There'll be no stumbling. In other words, there's going to be a straight path of discipline we can follow on the way in. God's going to bless that. But if we think we're just going to just sort of coast into the end time and everything's going to be wonderful, we probably should be thinking again. You know, the way back isn't necessarily going to be more complicated. It may in some respects be simpler. It costs you something to follow God. There's going to be a lot of static, a lot of cul-de-sacs, some blind alleys for us. It's going to take some commitment. It's going to take some determination, but God will work with us if we work with him. One of the most imperative pieces is going to be for us to be in connection with each other, with godly people in the church. If you're on your own, the devil will pick you off out on the edges. But if we stand together with others who strongly desire to see the remnant return, God will use us and God will give us strength and encouragement. So let's, let's combine together. Let's be faithful on the way to the kingdom. God will bless that. God will help us live through his end-time uh, return, his end-time gathering as he brings us back from Babylon, back to his pure truth, back to the foot of the cross of Jesus. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we want to be in your will. We pray that you'll bless your church today. Help your church to be in a place where you can bless it. We can see that you want to bring your people back. You wanted to bring them back from captivity in Babylon, and you want to bring us back from this captivity to spiritual Babylon. Oh, Lord, there's a lot that you want to do with the remnant, Lord. The picture you have given here of a people, not the whole people you wanted, but all the people who are willing who, to come back to you. Help us to be that group of people, Lord. Help us to be true to Jesus, and we will give all the praise to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friend, God will restore his remnant, and he'll bring us together again. We may be living in some of the most thrilling days for God's church in the in the months and years just ahead. We can't be that far from the kingdom. God be with you today as he works for you today.